This is Pat Sherlock, and for those that are new to our monthly webinar series, I'm going to be sharing my company's research and best practices from our clients in mortgage banking. QFS, my company, helps managers improve their sales results through our assessments and in addition to our training programs that improve their originator's sales performance in the field. We're going to talk about today a very important topic, uh, certainly today with the market shifting. I obviously understand you all are busy, and but this wall between sales and operations is really a critical topic. So any questions for the uh, presenter, including myself, certainly use the chat feature on the right-hand side of the webinar. I will attempt to answer as many questions as I can, and certainly if I do not get to your question, just email me and I'd love to hear from you. Uh, well, first off, let's start with what is the wall? and then talk about how do we resolve this critical issue of differences between sales and operations. And personally, myself and my own business career and mortgage banking career have recognized this issue firsthand. My own career, I started out in the operational end of it, so I know what the operational people are thinking, and certainly as I ran sales, I certainly understand from the sales side of it. But today I see this issue certainly a lot in our consulting work, so it is very relevant and still applies. The walls really are another name for silos between groups. On the one side is the originators, and on the other side is operations. As we all know, these silos definitely waste resources, they kill productivity, and they jeopardize achievement of corporate goals, so they cannot be ignored. And even in this last year, especially when production has had been more difficult, it seems as if this issue has risen to the top for many companies. Because we certainly have done a fair number of work from a consulting standpoint on resolving the silos. I think it's important to understand really where sales is coming from and obviously where operations is coming from. On the one side, sales is saying, why can't we deliver what we are selling? And on the other hand, Ops is saying, why is sales selling what we can't deliver? When you look at it in a deeper dive side of it, you're talking about sales teams having a certain mindset. And I think it's really important to understand what that mindset is before we really get into the solution of it. On the sales side, the originators, they really think everything is gray. They also are really driven by the customer comes first. And they definitely believe that selling is the toughest job in the company. And that ops really don't know how difficult it is as a job to sell. So let's look on the other hand, what do the ops people think? Where is their mindset? Well, ops thinks in a completely different way where they value what is accurate, and certainly details are what they're all about. Protecting the company comes first for operations people, and they feel that the toughest job in the company is managing those out-of-control originators. Originators, in their view, make their own problems. And Ops certainly believes, in many cases, that they are underpaid and they work just as hard as the originators do. Obviously, not all salespeople or operations people really feel this way, but too often the wall or silo between the two groups is really very large and in a more difficult selling environment has made this wall almost impossible to resolve at many companies. But who is impacted the most when the silo or wall exists and runs the company? Well, frankly, what all it centers on is the customer is impacted. We know from research that the customer's experience, that 50% of that is all driven by the overall experience for the customer. So the overall experience of the customer is driven not just by sales, but also by operations. So it's a two-prong issue. And the company 
its impact is really quite significant from the standpoint that the customer does not have an overall positive experience, they will not refer business to you, and likewise, they will not themselves come back for another load. So it's very critical that both sales and ops work well together. And really, this translates into a competitive advantage. And too often, what you end up seeing is finger pointing. The one side feels it's their problem. The other side feels it's the other guy's problem. So the reality is it is essentially a company problem and that has a tremendous impact. Just this week, I was in a meeting on Monday with a lender where this exact issue was coming, was rearing its head, where the one side was saying, well, it's not my fault, it's really the other side of it. The reality is, again, as mentioned, it really is an issue for the company as a whole, and what is what really does drive the satisfaction that the customer has. When you look at what have we learned, and that's from doing this, not just as when I was in mortgage banking, but the reality of it is, even from a consulting standpoint, the lessons learned really pretty much are three. And it really starts with a conflicted leadership team. And frankly, what this means is there's no buy-in at the top on long-term goals or key initiatives. Let me repeat that because that's really important especially as we're now moving to a purchase money market, the reality of it is that what is the buy-in for your strategy to be successful? What key initiatives are you taking upon yourself? If the senior leadership isn't in agreement, really that's going to translate downward to employees not sharing that they're there to drive the customer experience. So again, it centers on conflicted leadership team. There's not a unified front. And that really translates into the root causes not being addressed. Again, you see this in this issue of finger pointing that certainly can occur. And what happens? Poor service ends up getting delivered. So the bottom line is that leadership has to be on the same page. And I'm going to share with you a few action points that really make this happen. First off, there has to be an agreement, a united vision and standards at the company. The big picture of the whole company has to be embedded in your senior management. And in today's competitive marketplace, just assuming there is agreement is really a fatal mistake and frankly, what even worked in the past may not be what the vision should be currently. So step one is to get everybody on the same page. Step two is to look at the silo problem, not as a sales problem, not as an operations problem, but really from the customer's viewpoint. What is the customer's experience? Because that really is the critical issue. Thirdly, sales and ops have to communicate. Too often what you end up seeing is that one side doesn't know what the other side is doing. I would suggest, and one of the recommendations that we often make, is that you should attend each other's meetings. And these meetings need to be face-to-face. -face. Emailing is really not enough. Again, it is understanding that both sides of the business, the sales side and the operations side, have to work together to be effective in driving a satisfied customer experience. So many times what ends up happening is there really isn't any relationship developed between the operational side or the sales side. So face-to-face -face meetings are really critical, and frankly, getting to know the person on the other side is also a very smart move. Fourthly, you have to develop a common roadmap. Both sides, both sales and operations, really have to be together on how they're going to execute. And standards have to be in place for sales and operations. 
when you talk to operations or underwriting is at a set time. An example of that would be if you're letting all phone calls come in to operations and underwriting and processing, uh, you're going to end up having really uh, a operations staff that's overwhelmed. So the point of developing a common roadmap really is about putting together standards and also enforcing those standards. The fifth step that I see often when we're consulting with companies on this issue is that you cannot tolerate on the sales side what I would define are mad dogs. These are individuals that are low performers. Again, you're talking about the people that practically are only doing one unit a month or something as low as not even any production, but they clog your system. These underperformers are mad dogs, and they're mad dogs because when they get an application, uh, because they don't really prospect, they really kind of want operations to run over and make exceptions. So these are the people that end up being your exception people. Uh, sales cannot really tolerate the mad dogs. The mad dogs end up uh, being an issue of overworking the operational staff with someone that really isn't matched to production. The other issue that I would say that I see as a footnote that I think is really important goes along with the issue of the communication side of it is that when you are matching sales to operations, it really helps, and I certainly have quite a few of our clients, where we are trying to match from a communication style the processor and underwriter. Again, if you look back at what was said just a few minutes ago, these folks are good at their job because they have a certain mindset. Well, that may not be, obviously, the same mindset that the sales side has. So how they communicate with each other is really an important issue. And so it's important to understand when you're assigning sales to different operations people that you take into consideration this whole issue of what is the communication style of the individual versus just assigning them based on geographic. So the five practices and five plus one practice is really an issue of getting agreement at the top levels on what's the vision and what's the standards for how you have to have to compete in today's marketplace. So it behooves you, even though you might have been together a long time as a team, to look at, does that vision really work today? And then when you look at the problem, you really have to look at it not from the sales side completely, not from the operational side completely, but from the customer's viewpoint. What would make the customer's experience be better? And again, that's working both together, sales and operation effectively. And then again, how do you, in other words, make this communication work between sales and operations? It does get down to really an issue of communicating in a better way. Attending each other's meetings is really critical, and I would highly recommend that that becomes the norm of how you operate. And those meetings have to be within a face-to-face -face component of it. And the relationship between that, those two sides of the business would develop really into a common roadmap, which would be an issuing of standards of how it should work to, in other words, enhance the experience with the customer, to wow the customer. And part of doing that is addressing the underperformers in addition to recognizing that not everybody has the same communication style and that when you are aligning the sales side of it and the operation side of it, that you're putting that in as an important requirement, that those individuals do essentially communicate in a similar way. So the takeaway for today is really pretty basic, but really needs to be reemphasized, is that the leadership needs to champion a culture of our organization and not a culture of the department, my department is this. In other words, sales and operations to be successful really have to be on the same roadmap. It doesn't really make any sense or certainly it serves no purpose for a company to have both sides of them not in sync. And too often, unfortunately, that's what you end up seeing. 
Better companies are companies that do align with each other, the sales and the operational side of it. So let me open it up for a few questions and do the questions through the chat feature on the right-hand side of the GoToWebinar. I have a question here from Chad who asked, you know, talk a little bit more about the mad dogs and the clogging of the system. Well, it's a great question, Chad. I have to say that the mad dogs, often what you end up seeing is a lot of times where the, it's the individuals that really do not prospect enough, therefore they only have minimal application volume. And these individuals really I define as being a mad dog because what ends up happening that because they aren't prospecting, their application flow is very minimal. And so when they have something, they're all over the underwriting side and also with the uh, processor end of it. And what that translates into is an individual being really clogging a system that should be really set up for your better performers to begin with. So again, part of the correction process is to install standards and those performance standards translates into addressing the mad dog's lack of production uh, as quickly as possible. And in today's market, uh, that should be really, you know, less than a 90-day kind of review. Another question that John asked is, again, talk more about the impact that a poor originator has on the operational side. Well, that's pretty obvious, John, that when you have poor origination performance numbers, what ends up happening is what's going on at the company is really a lack of sticking to their guns on what is the minimum goals and production numbers that they should have at the origination level. Too often what I see certainly is that people will have standards, but the standards aren't enforced and the manager looks the other way when underperformance is really uh, doesn't warrant the person maintaining their position. So a lot of the impact that occurs on the operational side are from these individuals on the low end that really are uh, probably not match for the position. Just a couple things more. You know, this is the time of the year where you start looking at sales rallies. Uh, it's right around the corner. Um, certainly contact me if you're looking for someone to talk on a variety of these different sales topics uh, that we've been discussing over the last few months. In the MBA meeting that was just in Las Vegas, uh, we did roll out our sales video role-playing system, and so if you have any questions or like to see it, certainly let me know.